Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. If you're not, it's still my apartment. I'm just coming from the den den. Like it's very one, lovely. I like this One tree. last Christmas moment, yeah, for you, Dave. <laughs> for those of you uh, this who are new here, this is this and that. We are going to be discussing everything that happened at the 2021, 2022, to All Japan Figure Skating Championships. So if you are new here, please subscribe below and smash that like button. Give us all the love, all of the Pooh Bears that you wanted to give to <laughs> Hanyu. Leave them in the comments below. I don't like it in COVID without the Pooh Bears. You know, in Russia, they don't care, Jonathan, but <laughs> let's you know who care. Yeah, who should care are the flower girls or, yes. you know, yeah, the sweepers, yeah. I don't know about you, and I love this week of the holidays, but it's a lot, right? And mm -hmm. it's trying to fit everything in with the holidays and familial guilt and being like, we have these crazy events to watch. And I'm sure that all the viewers feel the same way. Like being a skating fan, you want to spend time with your family and your loved ones and do all of the holiday stuff. And at the same time, you're thinking like, okay, like the Super Bowl of Super Bowls is going on every five seconds. Like what, what is happening? Well, or what's the expression? It's like Christmas. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember going to mass and driving to my sister's house in 2013, December, 2013. So it would be right before the 2014 Olympics and Plushenko like was competing at the free, what was happening? Was he gonna make the Russian team? What kind of shenanigans were gonna go on? It was a nail biter at that point. We still time. wondered if Tuk Tabisheva was making a team back then. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was, it's quite um, the event. I find that I have to watch them independently of each other. I, yes. I mean, I'm too old to wake up in the middle of the night and then function and do everything that we have to do in a day, right? So. When I'm in Russia, I have to be in Russia. Like I can't right. be in Russia and like also in Japan. Like I need right. to be in it, right? right. And people, as soon, and it's so funny because as soon as we post the Russian show, it's not even up for like 30 seconds. It's like, when are you posting Japan? When are you posting Japan? <laughs> I know, and I feel like the men, like I, we, still, we still hadn't found some of the free skates for the men by the time people were asking. <laughs> I want to talk about that in general. Um, listen, there's a lot that we have to say about Japan and Russia and things that Japan did right and things that Russia is doing right. The one thing that I think Russia has over Japan is that they make their skating accessible. And I know yes. that every TV network and contracts are different, but when you're building a sport in a country and you have superstars, I think it's imperative that you do what Japan does. Even NBC Sports will start to post at least the top people on their YouTube channel. And they're not necessarily making money off of those videos. I just wanna like, I'll give a little YouTube lesson. That money really goes to the musical artist based on how skating is, especially now that lyrics are used. Mm, interesting. That if they're using like the Lion King, that would go to like Disney music, right? And you know, Elton John gets, you know, a, a wheat penny off of it, you know, a tenth of a cent, <laughs> right? But yes. it's not that someone, when you're posting a video that has any sort of copyrighted music in it, um, as, the only ones that aren't are the ones that are like, you know, really old where the copyright has expired, typically. It's the kind opera. of- Opera, I mean, yeah. you're talking hundred years plus, yeah. Opera, so. you know, maybe a Moonlight the Mozart, Star, yeah. you know, depending yeah. on the, re and it depends on the recording. It's not just, it's, who recorded it and when. So if you hear my- is he, is he so, This is different because like, for instance, if I were to sing a concert and do music that was within the last 100 years and I made money on doing that music is when it, it starts to kick in. Mm -hmm. If I'm like just doing like a benefit gala or something like that, and I'm gonna sing some like American Hollywood song that's within the, the 100 years, if I am like donating my performance, then I don't have to worry about it. So in these instances, are the networks making money by, with the YouTube no. views? Let's talk about that. How can yeah. they make money on YouTube? One, it's marketing. It's expanding your reach and your audience so that someone wants to one, know your channel. They want to be interested in it. Now, if this is the same network that's covering the Olympics and you're covering the Olympic trials, it behooves you to make that accessible because you're only ramping up the excitement, the interest, and making sure that everyone knows who these skaters are. Yes, probably everyone in Japan knows who Yuzuru Hanyu is, correct? But maybe not everyone knows who Kazuki Tomono or Shun Sato are. And right. when you're introducing them, 
and you see them from year to year and competition to competition, you're starting to build that. So in a world where Yuzuru Hanyu is no longer competing, you then still have people that the audience are invested in, right? So many of us met and fell in love with Michelle Kwan at that 94 Worlds. Yes. Not at 96 Worlds when, I, when she yeah. was winning everything. Yeah. And it had the fluff piece of her dad putting her to bed at night. And you know, so all of these things, it's building for marketing. The other thing is that when you get a huge audience like Japan does, like Russia does, part of those ads that you're seeing on the sides of the boards, you know, the Gazprom ad, it's also, they know that it's going to be showed on the internet. They know the ice cream. It wasn't the funniest. The funniest ad was Glade. Did you see there was a Glade um, like air freshener ad next to like a canned ham ad in Russia. This is particularly unique. This was particular. So that's what's paying. <laughs> when you go back to 97, it, it was like MasterCard, like, like your credit cards, um, right. Bailey's, uh, right. Irish cream, you know, things like that. So all of those things do get shown. Uh, and when you're doing a broadcast that's, you know, you know, webcast, you could also you know, on the breaks, be showing ads there as well. There are different options. I just think that it's a missed opportunity for Japan when they have these huge stars and they are global stars that, and I don't know the way their rights and their laws work, work there in the media laws, but it does feel like a missed opportunity because they have these stars. I saw, you know, another YouTube channel that had uploaded Hanyu within two hours, it was almost going towards a million views, right? right? When you have something like lightning in a bottle like that, you just want to be, expanding and doing you know you and taking advantage of it so. well and finding some of these on youtube you would find these like brief windows of opportunity where certain channels would exist before they were basically shut down because there's some that have like the series of numbers the and, japanese so channels the next. Yeah. you post videos from japan you will likely get strikes from it and sometimes the different fan groups report it sometimes it just is flagged by the network yada yada but it happens with the ice shows it's always really hard to find videos of the ice every year for whatever network mm -hmm. or whatever you know the reasoning there just different things like that i think it would behoove them especially as skating being a global sport in the predicament that it is we've all moved to the internet we are watching global skating i'm as interested in russian nationals as i'm am in US nationals, perhaps more so. I'm as exactly. interested in Japanese nationals as I am in American nationals, perhaps more so. Knowing that people from all over the world are gonna watch, I think it does behoove them to also have an English speaking commentator there, just to expand uh, the influence. That's- The global, the global scene. And you are absolutely right, because the minute Channel One started deciding to show the whole event. Like it took all that guesswork out. Russian nationals, no problem. I know exactly where to find it in its entirety, every skater, whenever I'm ready for it. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Hunting, hunting is exhausting. So the other thing that helps videos in the algorithm, so just give a little YouTube lesson for people, but when you're watching an event and it says 40,000 people are watching. So the main important, one of the most important uh, factors in the algorithm watch time and engagement, right? So mm. watch time is a cumulative number of minutes that all people combined have watched a video. So if a hundred people watch a hundred minutes of a video, you know, you, you do the math, right? The other thing is engagement. So that's why they have the chat on the side because they want to keep you watching and engaged. Mm. That's why they have the comment section turned on. All of that trigger the algorithm. So then that video will then be suggested to other people on YouTube. Yeah. And that's how that video doesn't just die when you're like, well, only 40,000 people were watching it. Yeah, but it's shown to so many people that that can go up into the hundreds of many thousands. Many of us watching several hours of that yeah, video yeah, yeah. over a period of time. Yeah. Yes. So, and, that, and that's the real benefit of it. So I think that that's just where it's going. And I think that for whatever reason, maybe, and they may have a, a reason why the network sh does or doesn't show it. Obviously, Channel One in Russia is owned by that network, right? And in, in, in the US, everything is about paid subscription, right? Everything is a paid model. You can watch this stuff on Peacock, but you got to pay for it, right? You can watch the practice on Peacock. The other thing is that when you do prove that you have these large audiences, that's when you can bring sponsors in. When you have it on Peacock and you have it, yes, it's paid and you're getting money to NBC, but it's on a closed group of people, it's never going to expand too far beyond. No one saw State America. Like yeah. it was, it was yeah. damn near impossible for, for people to find footage that were actively, aggressively trying to find. 
That's and at long. least NBC, which obviously owns Peacock, does put some of the top performers on YouTube and some of those videos do very, very well. Uh, so I think that that's a benefit that they do. But I'm just saying like the different thought processes and logistics, if you want to bring sponsors in, you have to make it broadly accessible. So right. it's, I mean, USA Gymnastics had like a huge YouTube channel and it really was building the brand until the brand went off a cliff, right? And right, that's right. the kind of thing there. But the, the disappointing part is that the Japanese coverage is mm -hmm. excellent. It's excellent. I love watching the like diagrams of the ice coverage, of the speed, of the height, of the Imagine distance. Imagine if you like, had someone explaining how fast someone just skated. And then we all understand the scores or suddenly all of the mysticism around the new scoring system that's over 20 years old practically. It's like suddenly it just sort of makes sense for us. And the height and the jumps and the trajectory, all of that stuff I think could really be explained. Yeah. And it would be so engaging to an audience, especially if they had, uh, you know, that kind of dual language broadcast the way Russia does where it goes back and forth and you can understand what people are saying. Are you more engaged watching a nationals where the subject is we are now comparing the distance and speed in and out of everyone's triple axle? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to see what hat Johnny is wearing? I, I'm, into, I'm tuning in for the sport. So show I'm me the tuning sport. into the sport. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to have a comment on what Johnny's wearing and that it doesn't add to the fun. I actually okay. watching these nationals think that the US needs to adopt all of it, okay? I mean, we need the fashion with the Christmas sweaters and if we need to bring it, I, what I like about Russian nationals is that they bring back a lot of the stars, right? So you're seeing Arena Slitskaya in the audience. You're seeing, um, you know, Alexei Agudin in his Christmas sweater and Evgeny Plushenka is coaching. You see uh, Zhenya Medvedeva in a Christmas sweater and Alina Zagitova in her business major suit. You know, like, <laughs> I like that we get to see all of these old friends. You see Tatiana Tarasova, you see Tamara Masvina. I think it would behoove the USFS to have Michelle Kwan there, to have Christy Yamaguchi. And if they're, even if they're just in a box and you're just flashing to them like they're flashing to Arena, I think it adds something. There's an element of nostalgia. There's an element of where are they now? There's an, and all of those things. It's an inclusive community that Russia has cultivated. It feels like they all went to school together or they all went to the same alma mater or something. And you're right, in the United States, we get Paulina Edmonds and Marai Nagasu in an empty corridor, or like, doing some they realize, right analysis no one's watching. They realize something is that these sports are also interconnected, right? The, at all of the performance-based sports have elements that overlap with each other, whether they're using same costume designers or they're doing shows together or they're involved in different professional outings. So having Margarita Mamun, some people liked her commentary, some people did it, but when she's in there, it's like, oh, here's another star from the Summer Games who's also there and it just adds interest. Because maybe mm. someone likes rhythmic gymnastics and oh, they're gonna stop by the TV for a second because she's on there. I think, right. in, you know, I don't know, but I think nationals in the US, perfect time to say, hi, Michelle Kwan, Oh my God, it's amazing. The Olympics are here. You're the ambassador to Belize. Like, congratulations. And have Simone Biles run up to her with the microphone. You know, that kind of a thing, you know, having Adam Rapon there, having Johnny, having Tara, all of the great, Peggy Fleming and Dorothy. That's not Fleming. just for the arena because no. they, they think they're doing something for the arena in that heinous carryover from hockey or whatever, that rusty clown guy. And it, it, it doesn't interest us, please don't, you know, insult us that way. We wanna see former skaters, we wanna see them on TV. We wanna like engage in this common love of this sport. And you're right, Michelle Kwan sitting in a Christmas sweater talking to Peggy Fleming and then suddenly like, boom, walks past Alyssa Liu. Let's just have a quick impromptu chat because we're all friends and we all love this sport. Like, and yes. we feel a part of that. Like I felt a part right, of that. Ryan can bring out his cocktails for everyone, right? Sitting there and the whole, right? I think, yeah. the, I think that on NBC, even though, you know, and the, the Christmas trees, if they're New Year's trees, Christmas trees, whatever, they, you know, I think that it just adds a feeling of home and fun and Home joy. and fun, yep. Right? And it, it just, it just added to it to me. Uh, it just added for it. And I think that in Japan, I would love to see Majori Ito and Yukasato and everyone there as well, if they could add that in. I think that that would be interesting to see because we all want to see these people and it, it keeps everyone engaged in the sport and relevant and people want to be interested and bring they have an in. army an yeah. army of retired stars there yes. that i would all love to see yeah absolutely
Yeah. So, and I think it's a real, uh, it's a missed opportunity, especially in the Olympic trials years. You know, I know that they try to do reunions at certain of these sports, but I think it. it well, that's for 50 people at a pancake breakfast at the hotel because everybody gave 50 bucks to friends yeah. of figure skating. I mean, it needs to think bigger. You're right. I think yeah. especially for TV, right, to set yeah. the stage and it gets everyone excited for the Olympics. You're seeing these Olympic stars in the past and your memories of them are being jogged. And oh, my God, Peggy, how about that chartreuse dress? Have you noticed that chartreuse is everywhere in the mall this year? <laughs> it is. Right? So exactly. Those are just kind of things that I was thinking. Um, the mask wearing. Japan, everyone's wearing masks. Delivered to them in like a fine envelope for some of the kiss and cry moments. Like it was like delivered. It's like a gift. I loved it. They were so respectful about it. Russia, no one had it on. <laughs> Everyone had to lick the door handle on the way to. No. <laughs> it, it did, did feel, feel that. that in Russia, right? It did feel that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you got text, but a lot of people were asking me. So if the Russian team gets COVID, they're just going to fake those PCR tests, right? Like that's where people's minds are going. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because the alternate, uh, the alternates may have the same positive tests. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, oh, I mean, when people are like, the Russian ladies are going to sweep and it's like, well, Omicron is a thing and there was not a mask in sight. And um, <laughs> it's taken some down before. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you hope no one gets it, but we live in this reality where we're testing positive every single day. Exactly. So those are just like my overall thoughts about, you know, I think ultimately to build the sport and build the skaters and around the world and we all want to see it. So yeah, anyway. absolutely. It was interesting to see the Japanese coverage go back to what NBC was using for a while with those green, yellow and red squares. I've not seen those for a while and I can't say I missed them. I don't, I don't know that they really add. I think that they do add when you don't spend so much time focusing on them. As hmm. a viewer, maybe I went to scratch my behind for a second, right? During a during a went to the refrigerator. <laughs> I had to run, or someone's calling me in the other room. You're cooking, whatever, and I miss a jumping pass. I don't mind looking like, oh, it was green. Okay, we're good. And I'm back in the performance and I'm gonna catch up later. So. I mean, I feel the box sometimes does so that with the score anyway. You, uh, you know what I mean? Yes. Like, as long I mean, as there weren't two in a row or something. But, but. I, I didn't find it to be obtrusive, right? I, I, that's the thing. So I thought it okay. Sandra changed my mind. I used to like it, especially in dance because it helped me understand the, the name of the move I was watching. Sometimes mm -hmm. I don't know if, if it's a midline step or a diagonal step. Like, so that thing always helped me do it. But I remember Sandra being like, how could you enjoy any performance if you're, she's like, that tells you the problem in the sport is that you're zipping up away from the art of it to watch numbers change in the court. Well, I, I agree with her in terms of a performance, especially in terms of the second mark. I think in terms of the reality of the sport and what we care about knowing that someone's triple axle better be rotated, otherwise they're not gonna get full credit. Right. Just making sure, being like, okay, it's yellow. All right, they're, they're checking it after. That's just what, why I, it's a Saturday I, check for me. I right? remember something about Megan, I thought she said at the Olympics when she was coming up the tunnel, or, mm -hmm. you know, coming out to skate because she had tried so hard to not hear scores and applause. She was like, I accidentally saw somebody scream and yeah. it was all, it was all green. Mm -hmm. And she was like, damn it. <laughs> like, I wish I had not seen that. <laughs> I'm the same way where I don't like to see people and how they do. First of all, I would never want to watch anyone and wish ill on anyone because everyone works hard and is putting themselves out there. And you know, human nature in that moment. Generally, I find that if I'm watching someone before me, if they do well, I'm like, oh, maybe I'm not so good. If I see them mess up, I'm like, oh, maybe I'm going to mess up too. So I don't like to watch it. Yeah, yeah. Period. It's a lot of emotional energy. So. I feel okay. Megan there. If you see someone green, how are you not going to be like in that moment? Like, oh, yeah. And then you yeah. have to be like, wait, I can do that too. And it then you up your pressure. And that's what she said. She's like, well, then I can do all green. Like, but yeah, yeah, that's a hard thing to think right before you go on. Yeah. So. Well, speaking of all green, let's discuss Yuzuru Hanyu here because a lot of what he did had a lot of green and a lot of positive GOE. Okay, let's start. Everyone wants to know Jonathan, the quad axle. We saw it in practice. We saw it in the free. 
the attempt. I, I know there were a lot of people first calling it clean because it was on a foot. Um, it the was wrong not, foot and an under It's not clean, foot. but the fact and that he's attempting it is incredible. And he is, and, and I'm of Mishan's opinion. It wasn't clean, but it was great, you know, right? That's kind of- That's a, Yes, and, and of the attempts we had seen, the best uh, of everyone. The, the this is the closest. Now I understand if I see these attempts that he's going for. Mm -hmm. Before I was like, it seems so dangerously in progress that I don't know if we should hitch everything onto it. What of course blows my mind. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, it's honest... because it's what is the base value of that thing? Because of course I'm looking at stadiumstories.com, but because it had the double carrot, it was reduced to a base value of eight. So what I do, what, what I'm getting at is that like his quad, his quad sal, the base value was 9.7. And so he has removed the triple or the quadruple loop, which as I'm looking at Shomas has a base value of 10.5. I don't yeah. know. So, so it, it just I tells wrote me this down in notes. So you're asking, if, I believe it's base value. I'm going to say the wrong thing. I, I want to say, didn't say 12 and then he deducted, but I'm, but don't ask, I don't don't quote me on the base value of quad axle. What it I didn't do know is as, as as monumental as it could have been for as monumental. Well, a this is it. what my notes were about this. He got four point eleven points on the quad axle. Right. Shoma got thirteen point six five points on his opening quad loop. We have seen Yuzuru Hanyu do gorgeous quad loop. Gorgeous quad loop. Yeah, and Especially, that was with Shoma primarily at a plus three, but we do know that Hanyu gets plus four or five when he does that. Well, I think his is better. It's not always as consistent in practice, but in competition, we have seen him do the most gorgeous quad loops. If Yuzuru Hanyu had done Shoma Uno's quad loop in his program, he would have scored 331.90 points here. <laughs> 11 points higher than what Nathan Chen got at Worlds. Now, granted, it's national scoring. Also, I read Twitter, and the Fanyu like to say that Nathan Chen gets scored like he's at nationals every day, every competition. I digress. It's interesting data. It means that Nathan would have to be perfect. Olympic pressure. I think, listen. I know. I'm with you on this. I'm with you. Yuzuru Hanyu's dream to do the quad axle, right? And that's what he said. And maybe that took some of the pressure of going for a third Olympic title off. But Jonathan, he is in this, okay? He's, he's right there. He's Sonia Hennying this moment, right? He is right there. And if I felt this about the US gymnastics team in 2008, everyone was like, yes, but the Chinese girls have more base value. You nail it under pressure, even a little bit under in base value and you give performance and the meat of your life you force them to have to compete under that pressure and you force them to have to win because a lot of people will crumble under the pressure and nathan has fallen at the olympics before and four years later it doesn't get easier right right look at how michelle kwan brian orser when they tried to turn silver into gold it is hard okay right. the french are going to have to face that it is really, really difficult, especially when you've never won before and everyone feels that you are of that caliber. I really think that Yuzu, I think he could do it. Oh, I think, I think he, he can. I think that if the, but that's me turning the goal into winning. And I think he can if he does the quad loop. If he does, I think if he were to do a quad loop and skate perfectly clean, with it, all those transitions in and out of those those difficult uh, his quads, it would be really difficult for anyone to beat him. And if they did beat him, well, by golly, they really earned it. Right. And I think yes, I know it's his dream to do the quad axle. I don't believe he can get it from a double carrot to clean in the, by the Olympics. I don't believe it. I would love to see it happen. I'm just using my rational brain, right? I'm not using my fan brain. I'm using rational brain. And right. furthermore, forget a program in the exhibition. Let him just do it. 17 attempts on the exhibition ice. We'll all watch, okay? Yes, we will. And those are the videos that will go viral. But like, yeah. Okay. Forget a program. He can do an Ina Bauer and 17 quad axle attempts, all right? I don't care. 
right? Let him do it in the team of, no, why would you want to? He could win. Why would you risk the injury? That's, that's my thing also. I want to see him lead Japan to a team medal. Frankly, they could put the pressure on for Russia to like lose. They could, right? You and I were talking about this yesterday and I was like, how do they think they were an outside shot for bronze? And now I'm like, hold on a second. <laughs> I was like, hold they on could make second. some real magic if this Let's happens. talk about it. You have Yuzuru Hanyu do short and long. Let's say he did it or another person, right? Even Yuga Kamiyama, he's going to beat Koyada. Okay, Correct. like Correct. In Olympic pressure, come on. Or right? Semenenko, yeah, exactly. And depending on who the U.S. put in for the, let's say Nathan does the short, Vincent does the free, something like that. Yuzu can beat Vincent, like, right? right? Okay, let's say that China gets, that, sorry, Japan gets maximum points in China. <laughs> Japan gets maximum points in China at the Olympics for men. Ladies, let's say they get second. Which stands to reason, yeah. Is Russia going to do first in ladies and second in the men? I don't think so. I think Russia would do first in ladies, maybe third, maybe fourth in the men. I know, because they're going to have the Italian skating. If they skate clean, they're going to have the French skating. If Kevin pulls out an interesting short or something, you know. This is short and long, right? So yeah. let's think about it. This is why I think Camilla has to do short and long. Uh, because I do think, look, truth of it goes for all those quads. She may not stand up on all of them. Right, right. Um, <clears throat> Okay. Forever then, again. Okay. <sighs> Moving yeah, along. Yeah. To, um, let's talk about the pairs. Well, Jonathan, you know Terry's going to campaign for Tarasova and Morozov to do the team event. That's a tough campaign for them right now. You know what, you know what Japan should say? Please do it. Let this happen. Please yeah. let this happen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Riku and Ruichi, they are ready. They are ready to go, <laughs> okay? Right. They are ready. Tarasova and Morozov putting down a lift like they're Vanessa James and Eric. Like, come on. They're, they are right there, ready to go. Yeah. Dance, that's a gamble. Nikita's got a back injury. Who the heck knows? We've seen Nikita miss a twizzle before. I mean, they're at least, it's within the realm of margin of error. Yeah. I think Russia is obviously the favorite. And Japan is obviously the favorite for silver, but it's within the margin of error that things could happen. Isn't that interesting? Because I really thought <clears throat> for a while the U.S. was a lock because we were so solidly middling in most areas. The U.S. is right. the queen of the bronze medal in this team event, right? We've been outscored in pairs and ladies. It's close in men and it's not close in dance. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's turning out Japan really brought in a season where we felt like there were a couple of open doors for people to go through, the person going through them is the Japanese Federation as a whole for the team event. That's been like Madonna, an exciting surprise. What if they put Diana and the team of judges decide to judge her accurately? That could be trouble. Like not with the Igor Spielbahn political marks. Right. Not with... Like, what if we find out that Diana's going to do the team event and the rest of the judges around the world are DMing each other being like, oh, hell no. Yeah, no Warsaw here. Yeah. Hmm. Suddenly, so Tim Coletto doesn't seem so weak in the ice dance compared to Diana Davis. <laughs> I'm just saying, I am just yeah. saying, right? If like, it's called honestly, yeah. Hmm? Yeah, if the judges call it correctly. We've seen some crazy stuff in the team event. I mean, remember pollution because GOE, but anyway, Julius, <laughs> but uh, I digress. Okay. <laughs> um, yes. So moving along, wonderfulness. Um, just lovely. Um, what event we starting on? We're doing Yuzu. I thought that okay. everything. But that quad axle was fantastic. So and so now, how did you feel? I felt like there, especially in when did we see him earlier, where we saw like the pop, the pop short program, like it was like a, a more Last rock. Year, was it a world? Was that really it? For some reason, I thought we saw him at like a Japan Open or like some sort of exhibition or something. Because I remember being worried about his material this year, but this was better material. 
Now you're confusing me. Did I sleep through yeah. the season or something? No, you, of going? course no, you no, no, no. We, we've been doing this. He was season scheduled like to compete at the 2021 NHK Trophy in Rust Telecom, but he right. had to withdraw after injuring his right ankle ligament in practice. My right. All super bad. Um, no. And then nothing before that? No. Oh. I'm trying he's to. So... He was some at World Team Trophy? Maybe. Yeah, we lost him at World Team Trophy. I'm not him at the Worlds. Okay. I just, this material, it seemed like he went back to safe, which I, oh. or formula, and I don't mind that here with the piano music. It's not you the Chopin to. sophistication, but it's good. You say formula, right? We found out he was going to do Rondo Capriccioso. I didn't realize, I thought he was doing like the John Weir version, right? The Rochelle Kwan? No. He had a piano version <laughs> that somehow sounds exactly like Otanal <laughs> or Chopin. And he's yeah. wearing the same color scheme. He likes yeah. to wear light blue and whitish gray in the short program with some- And similar, and similar fits, yeah. No, so he was wearing like the Atari baggy look for the free for the for the pants in the in the short. And I wish he wore the pants for the free in the short. Usually you, you can wear the same black pants with both tops. I um it was a very Maoisana looking top from like her Tarasa. That, that's what I felt. Yeah. When she was, you know, just dripping in fabric. Yes. That's right. And that one line across the top. <laughs> I mean, his costumes have never been my favorite, um, but although I did like the um, the gold homage to Plushenka program, I just loved it. You know. Yeah, yeah. He he went he went all the way. Okay. It he was, just has that air about him that he just like lets you know he's in a different category. Well, when he does his roll back threes and like twizzles before he takes the ice, he is so over that right side, just like perfectly. It's yeah. breathtaking. So yeah. Um, and just the spins, the attention to detail, it's, and it's really the flow out of the jumps and often with like this beautiful twizzle moment, or is that like something, not only does the jump land it well, but it had so much speed and so much edge and control that he's able to do all these gorgeous things afterwards. Now he has a better basic balance over his blade than Nathan does. It's more buoyant. You're showing me that buoyancy, and I, I think that's right. That's what he has. I feel the body can do anything. Nathan, I think, is better at the toe jumps for the quad. Hanyu, I think, is better at the edge jumps. My opinion. But that I read that in their body, like mm -hmm. in that same way that Hanyu knows how to like almost go limp, let all, all the tension before he goes into something, where Nathan almost like wants to like feel mm -hmm. that tension in his like seat building thing or whatever he does. Like, no. It's just different approaches. And there's something very alluring about Hanyu's and like this, I don't know, new age hippie that like he doesn't force it, he allows it. I, there's something very beautiful when it's done well. I do think it's more of a competition than we realize. Although I remember Doug Haw, remember that, and someone needs to explain, because I don't know about Shinto and all of this, but that Hanyu had that guy that would focus him. And of course, Doug Haw called him a hypnotist before, but he was like, you know, that man was key. But then someone said he retired after the last Olympics. He needs to get that man back. He should not leave home without him. If that's true, <laughs> he hasn't beaten Nathan since that man was there. He needs him since back. Since he retired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anything that helps. Like, and I, I did read an article where Hanyu said, like, he, oh, I don't know if he said he almost wanted to get sick before the long or something like that, but like, he was so, so obsessed about the quad axle attempt that he, or he wanted to cry or something. There was such this weight around this white whale of an element that I'm just like, again, like you're saying, does this help you distract from all the other things you could be thinking about going in? Or does it make it even more intense for you? I, I don't think, know. I bet he could switch out pretty quick and put that quad loop in. I bet he still practices it, right? I think that yeah. he could switch it out at the last moment and... It's interesting. I would have been more scared for Nathan. Not that I'm scared for anyone. I want the, the best performance to win. But like, I would, I, if I were Nathan, I would be more worried if he came here and landed a flawless quad loop and got all that GOE and posted that number you mentioned he could have posted as opposed to an attempt at a quad axle that yeah. got four points, so. Listen, I know he said the quad axle is his goal, but he's so close to winning. I know. 
it changes everything, right? I know, I know. And a lot of us didn't know. I didn't know what he would be like here. I was thrilled to see him looking so strong in training. Yeah. So how about our friend Shoma Uno? Um, neither is my favorite program, although his short program costume is my favorite. Um, I just want to know how much that one bedazzled sleeve costs in the short because it's the most <laughs> costume. <laughs> and just knowing how much stone costs, I mean, I've got a Roth IRA. I've got, you know, <laughs> my four. I can't sleeve. afford that sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. Like, let's do it. Uh, although, I want to go. There, it was interesting because one of the other skaters, mm -hmm. it was either Kao Miura. I think it was Kao Miura, um, skated to music that I wished um, Shona had skated to in the freestyle. The Poeta, which is the yeah. Lavio piece? Yes, yeah. that's, that was yeah. Kao. Um, uh, I was like, I think that's, that kind of piece would have interested me greatly for Shona. Remember the tango he did with the screaming woman that we did, where he yeah. ended with ah! the back strap? Go back to that for the Olympics. It would thrill me. Okay. Yes. It, and, and if we're remembering, what ultimately gave Shoma a silver when some thought might have been that or that it was going to go to Javi was the reckless abandon of that Turinda. Like that almost the performance was so big, you couldn't not give him that silver medal. I don't know how you can do that with this material if he finds himself in a similar position. I think the bolero is just muted and it mutes what makes him so special. Or, and it's muted and then never has that like let it rip and unleash moment. I miss the Robin program. I miss the screaming woman. I, yeah. I would go, I would go back to either of them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Also, as the short is nice, but could you imagine an audience of Leslie Jones watching him do like the Michael Jackson like moves? I mean, come on, come on. For the public, we need to see it. Okay. We yeah. need to see it. <laughs> Amazing. Do you think that he goes too safe for the Olympics? Hmm. Although, I don't know. Yeah, the Turin Dog at the time seemed safe in 18, but it did have that big moment he needed. It did, but I, especially this year, I feel the music choices are safe. But the jumps seem a little safer. A well, little safer than they've seemed at this point in the season. Right. The quad, the first half of the free was going great. Yeah. For him, it was a dream. Okay. Yeah, for real. Say what you will about the quad floop. It was going well. And the quad toe fall was just like, oh. I know. I know. And he kind of mustered the other one. So he did have four clean quads and was attempting the five, but, but still placed third in the free. Again, so we've got someone with the loop and the flip, but they're placing behind Yuma with a more quality sow and two toes. I always feel like there's a moment in Shoma's programs where you start to hit the turbulence when you're flying, you know? <laughs> you never just have a safe flight all the way through. Yeah, or it's that like, it's too quiet moment. What's, or it's, why is it so easy right now? <laughs> yeah. It was going so well in the beginning. Um, Lambiel said he forgave him for the quad double in the short. I mean, we have seen yeah. him quad double so many times. Yeah, it would be hysterical so. if he quad triples at the Olympics. Uh, yeah, could be a game changer. Yes, so. Uh, Interesting. Yuma doing a beautiful job here. Yuma, Little trouble yeah. with the triple axel, yeah. Okay, let's talk it out. You know, the Russian tarot card lady that has predicted a lot of things correct. Whether you believe in it or not, I'm interested in what she has to predict versus what happens. And everyone just <laughs> keeps bringing up that the Russian tarot card woman on YouTube has said that an unknown or rookie skater would win. In men? In men's. Is that Guma, even though he won a world silver, he's still more of a newcomer? I consider him a newcomer and an unknown. I think plenty of people will be tuning in to say, who's that? And you're like, well, he has a silver medal from the worlds before, but. But he's not as experienced as Nathan or Yuzu. He's, so, he's not sure. at his third Olympics, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So is that him? Then I'm watching it and I'm like, well, he's very solid. He doesn't have enough emotion for me. It's getting there. 
But no, it's about getting the job done. You sort of see yeah. that. And it starts with the music. And I know they're trying to bring it out. And I love the costume in the free. I think we need a little bit of a haircut and a little bit of some makeup to really make them look more finished and polished off, just for the overall performance of it all. He needs to visit Matthew Caron <laughs> in the short program. <laughs> we need but it's no joke. You think about like, even just like regular newscasters, all the stuff they put on just to be under the, their lights. The yeah. lights of those arenas are harsh. They're, you know, yeah. I mean, we need to take him to Sephora. We need to go shopping. <laughs> he made the team, it's time, okay? Just his overall look and presentation needs to be upgraded, especially mm -hmm. in the short. The jumps are really spectacular. He's got a deep knee bend at times, like on the quad cell, I thought that he had a slight Shoma landing. Mm, okay. That hip was opening up, baby. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I'm just, just a little, uh, scared. He's grown into where he will be probably in a year in terms of the world ranking and his overall confidence and the presentation within it. We didn't see the quad loop here. He can do it. It can be a great jump for him. Uh, he has so much potential. I'm interested. He is a dark horse for me, even though he was the bronze medalist here. What, what do you think about- Yeah, story? bronze medalist, but I think, because what happened in the short? Did they just like Shoma more? I'm trying to remember right now, hold on. In the short, was it that? Oh, he, he had the issue with the quad toe okay. in the short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so again, he allowed that to happen a little bit. I think he was destined to be second. Uh, potentially, uh, they certainly- I see that. 95 points. Show got 101. So you start to look at how many points he had a minus five on the quad toes. So we only got 4.75 points for it. Yeah, they could have given it to him. And then obviously that impacts PCS. So yeah. Here's the thing I'm more interested in is who they're going to name as an alternate because we have um, Kao Mura, who was their junior champion, who did a really lovely job here. And he ended up fourth place. He was fifth in the short, fourth in the long. But of course, Kazuki Chimono and your big release moment at the end of that La La Land with enough He's energy. My favorite. Yes, I, I sort of felt that it wasn't my favorite way the results worked out. I felt there was an argument for having Kazuki for. He's the closest thing to Marin Honda. Power. He's the closest thing to Marin Honda doing Romeo and Juliet. Okay, it warms my heart so much when he could. It's genuine, it's honest, it's so well-trained so after all of those jumps. For the Olympics, first alternate is Cow, second alternate is Kazuki, third alternate is Senna. Yeah, I mean, they just went in order. I just, and I, I, I guess I don't. But I really feel, while we're talking about him, my favorite boy, Kazuki Tomono, has come alive with choreography, his jumps seem more steady, he seems more trained, he seems more mentally and physically prepared than we've ever seen him before. Yes, there was one problem in the free with the jump, but overall, his opening quads, green, right? Like brilliant, so good. Really brilliant, yeah. He's so close to doing it. I really hope he stays around another year, two years, you know, he's 23, 24, 25, he could, be a medalist, he could win several Grand Prix events. I think he's just coming into his own. And, and let's see who goes to Worlds also, because there may be some Olympic entries that will not go to Worlds. So I would love to see him in the Worlds. We might see Yuzu go to Worlds to do the quad axle. We may see him not go to Worlds, right? No. Um, anything could happen, coronavirus. Uh, he's not out of this. I think he could do very well at Four Continents, potentially even win. Um, mm -hmm. So, I would love to see Kazuki win four continents. I just, that program makes me happy. It, it reminds me of why I love skating. When you just- That's exactly right. Yeah. The abandon in that- And in I know that, that Marin Honda obviously event. won the ladies event here. So we didn't need- First place, Olympics. Olympic in my favorite. heart, forever. Okay. Yeah, forever my Olympic favorite, yeah. <laughs> you know, there are rumors she wants to do the ice dance. I don't know if that's just that she likes ice dance and likes watching it or she wants to do it. Why not? Okay, let's have all the favorites. If you want to go, don't fall in the rhythm dance. <laughs> she needs such a good partner for him. Maybe. I worry that she might forget the steps, but you know, it's okay. He'll remind you. I, 
<laughs> I love her so much. Okay. Even it's, just seeing her here, you know, hopelessly low in 17th place, whatever she was, 23rd place. Um, just lovely to see always. The loveliest. The loveliest. Okay. <laughs> It's not all about winning, okay? It's about skating and it, fantastic to watch her. Kazuki, same thing. The favorite performance? Expressive. Just has a projection and inherent like joy around the skating. It's really interesting. It awesome? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and again, like at lightning speed. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Like in the arena, you know, that thing must feel like crazy how much energy he throws in at the end when we saw several people at another championships fizzle out the farther it went and to see him get stronger and stronger and faster and faster it's just a testament to his training so you know when we compliment the japanese on their skating and the russian fans will be like yeah well how many quads did those women do you know what we should do when they try to gaslight us like that we should turn it and be like yeah we saw your men how come they don't compete like the Japanese. How many quads did they do? I mean, that's the thing, yeah. How to many me, programs it, did they do without dying in the second half, right? That's, we gotta ask. Or second that. jump, yeah, exactly. Because the, the, again, the depth of Japanese men right now is re reminiscent to me of that 2014, like golden boom for them, which was yes. just, it was incredible. And so many are young, which is, you know, we're gonna discuss them in, in a moment, but they have longevity in this sport cow 16 years old fantastic fantastic talent uh he did the poeta program that you wanted love uh, the music yeah show him what to do <laughs> i could also see kazuki doing something like that mm -hmm. fantastic it's fantastic interesting that he did it with lombi there coaching shoma um i know that's I what i mean <laughs> hey can we have a moment of honesty about cow yeah He's a little stiff in the muscles and in like the limbs, right? It's Which is sort of what surprised me about his fourth instead of fifth over Kazuki. Because Kazuki seems so in his body. Now, Cow, that stiffness is what will help him be such a good jumper, mm. right? The quick rotation, the quick body. But we will be saying for the next 10 years, can he really work on his artistry and his presentation? <laughs> you know it yeah. now you know what's yeah. coming okay yeah it's inherently not built to be an artistic flowy skater right he's built more like a bojang jin type i'm just also a world medalist you know also a world medalist <laughs> not once but twice yes. yeah uh, see. <laughs> but I, I i was like stiff legs there's no flexibility and he's got a really ugly camel and fantastic jumps yeah um, and just some, somehow that freshness that just uh -huh. is exciting because we have not seen him all season. I mean, I know we won the, the junior uh, nationals, but again, it's we haven't been inundated with him in these programs. So well, let's talk about what Japan's doing that's smart. So with Cal, he is going to four continents, right? He's the first alternate for the Winter Olympics. He's going to junior worlds and he's the first alternate for worlds. The chance that he goes to at least three of those competitions, probably likely, right? Because yeah. he's on the team for two, alternate for two. You got to think they're getting him enough ISU points so that he's going to get the Grand Prix assignments next year. Right. So they're already prepping another star. Right. And, you know, however many retirements, that's another one they have primed and ready to go. I think Kazuki, with his points, it would certainly make sense for him to compete next season. Yuma. Shoma, right? Like they have like a lot of options uh, to go with. So I thought that was good. But Jonathan, the biggest cauchemar of the event was the triple flip Euler situation that was happening to Shinsato in the free skate. He did the most brilliant quad lutz and just, just a wipe out nightmare of a three jump combination. Uh, just- uh, Plus fives on that quad lutz. Deserved. Yeah. Deserved. Yeah. Um, but then it then it became a cluster for him. <laughs> uh, any concern that this is the second competition we've seen him uh, pop the quad lots in the short. So that is a little worrying. Don't want it to get in his head, but he was so brilliant here and uh, he'll be at Junior Worlds, but he he lost out on going to- Yeah, I have to be honest. Like I wonder if after seeing him last season, he was going to play much more of a, a factor in this. He was so talented on the Grand Prix as well. Yeah. 
he's got a bright future. You yeah, got of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just wasn't lining up at the moment. That fall in the short killed it. Killed yeah. it. Yeah. Um, any thoughts on Sota, our lover of Michael Bolton and Andrea Bocelli? Oh, well, isn't he handsome? Like, I was, like, distracted. I was like, what a handsome <laughs> Um, And a really lovely short, obviously, Tough Times in the Long. But... Really tough three. Yeah. Um, and, and lovely, lovely. And Senna, Unchained Melody, a very natural jumper. I thought in the short, he did the uh, quad style, triple axle. And he had He had the tape around the skates and this, like, billowy white dress shirt hair that looked like it could have gotten a trim and he's just real wild and reckless abandoned which is great but it also makes him look unfinished right. and they just need to find a way to keep the bigness and just smooth the edges going yes even. Right. his was a bit costumey i don't know something yes. about yeah it was a miss for me yeah. um okay the ice dance event we got to get into it okay first of all how come lombiel was the only one who was allowed to get a visa to come here. I, he had a visa for something else already. I don't know why he could go, but um, Bruno Marcotte couldn't. That's why Rico and Ricci couldn't be here. Marina Zueva wasn't able to wheel and deal appropriately at these nationals shop. That's what her true talent- She's out of her real house. <laughs> her true talent are politicking and um, some Russian classics, yeah, right? Which she was able to do for her team, but in Poland. Not, yes. not in Japan itself. She got it done in Poland as he gave them something to work with on the ice. But you know, you right. have to work with the politics and not against right. it. Right. That was so Nikola's problem. <laughs> you know, she made it <laughs> obvious. <laughs> <In No. the laughs> um, I don't remember saying this, but apparently I said <laughs> that the only way Jim Coletta was going to make the Olympics is if Daisuke wiped out during the rhythm dance. Which not only he did, but she did as well. It's a great rhythm dance. Off it's the gate, we're two points behind in the rhythm dance now, just for the deductions for both falls. Now we have to deal with the actual deduction from you know, the failed element itself. I loved the concept of Dice Gates rhythm dance. I thought it was so much more interesting than everyone else's like just add water pop music approach. I, they helped him as much as they could. I know. <laughs> You know, it's been so fun to watch. It has. It's, it's been just been too fast. I think if she had started the wheels turning on this thing one, one season prior, they'd have it. Mm -hmm. I, Tim is great. His partner is great. Like they've done so many great things for their discipline in that country. Like it's not to take away from that at all. But it is like people are inherently interested because there's like a unique project going on. So we all tune in to our former favorite singles guy. You know what I mean? Like there's such a, a backstory there um, that it was interesting to see what happened. They couldn't make up enough points in the free. They could not make up enough points. Tim and Masato, they are very consistent and very and, well. And almost more tradition, they're easy to understand. Like here, let's show you why you can give us this level. They have a brilliant first lift and their twizzles were really good in the free. For like the brilliant, brilliant, brilliant first lift. I have to and say. that's all it took. That was all it took for them to make sure that they went. Um, I mean, but they are sending Daisuke to Worlds, which I thought was an interesting sort of trade-off. And Four Continents. Okay. But I thought it was just interesting to, you know, people want Daisuke. It's obviously there's a white American that's competing, right? He took his wife's last name um, to when he got citizenship here. But this is an interesting thing about how much Tim has wanted this. He's been American. He's been Korean. He has was he been Norwegian. Norwegian. He's been Norwegian. Okay. He's lived in Colorado, Michigan, Italy, Japan. <laughs> <laughs> A Michigan, citizen of the world. Montreal. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Yeah, didn't he used to be with Igor? Yes. Yeah, okay. And your girl, Barbara Fusarpoli with her stopwatch. <laughs> yes, yes. Who we love, who we love, okay. And they weren't even able to get in Canada for part of the time, so then they've been training in Colorado. I mean, they have worked for this moment, so. And 
I, going in here, I felt like the chips were stacked against them. Pulling it up. Against Tim. Yes, Jonathan, I felt like everyone wanted Daisuke to make this. I think well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a more novel story. Like, then you see every NBC Olympic article making some comment about it. But like, and they even made all the comments about him not. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I saw several NBC Olympic articles that said this former male star almost made the Olympics. Even the almost making it was enough of a story for some of the outlets. It was so close. I know, I bet Tim is like, can breathe like a huge sigh of relief here because that would have to be very intense. And what I commend as we talked about what happened perhaps in Canada with peers, the people in Japan and Ice Dance all hunkered down and worked as hard as they could. It was an interesting battle to see play out. Same with the Spanish. I think both teams like saw that we've got to do something here. What are we going to do? Let's give it our all. And that is such an enjoying competition to see, perhaps that we didn't see play out where it could have elsewhere. And Pim Masato, I really like their uh, their material better this year than last year. Last year was when they did the love story and I thought it was just generic <laughs> paint by number. Yeah. This year, yeah. I think it really works. Both programs, the, the rhythm dance is fun. Uh, maybe not street, uh, not that anyone- but, but, but some of the best music out there. <laughs> yeah. And he has more performance than he has had in the past. And I thought that the, the free just works really well uh, for them. And I like the costumes. So mm. I have to say, Daisuke, I mean, it's a Meryl Davis, Marina's a wave of fantasy. Okay, it's as if Marina was just able to do whatever she wanted to be like, oh, I have such a talent uh, for the free. And it, he's just like leaping and Marina- It's Inc. brilliant to see what she did. Oh my God, it's so fun. It's so yeah. fun. And again, I love that free dance of Dice. Like just because again, we haven't seen that kind of movement in a lot of free dances recently. I'm aware of their sort of new to ice dance limitations, but the material was very interesting. I hope someone calls Marina again. Can we get rid of Neville Horn? And why don't we do like a competition like The Voice or American Idol where the audience can vote who we want to see at the Olympics? Okay, <laughs> Jonathan. To Tamisha what would go. Can we vote extra spots, like not allotted to certain countries, but just the fan favorites for like the Even final- just like one, even just one in each discipline. <laughs> like fan I- favorite gets to send anyone they want. All right, so we're gonna send Elisabetta in the ladies. We're gonna send yes. Daisuke in the dance over Sada Hurtado. I'm sorry, Sada, you're just not Daisuke Takahashi. Right. Yeah, you are Should not. be unable to perform, you are my second choice, okay? Right. You are my second favorite, okay. Um, and maybe Kazuki Chimono in the men. Kazuki, yes, um, I'm I'm for that. Um, yes. Is there I, a pair you're worried might not be at the Olympics that you would like to see? Well, if Jessica Cowling wears too much makeup, I know that you love Pavly Yachenko. Um, Her. Deanna Stilato. <laughs> Deanna Stilato as um, the international choice. Um, That's right. <laughs> World competitor. She could be in the Medicare division, <laughs> Medicare Advantage. Um, and Rod Black will tell us. Yeah, okay. Uh, yes, yes, we should have at least Pairs one. Pairs less so, pairs less so, but I, I think you're right. It would be fun in each discipline for fans to Do just you want to tell Deanna Scalato that you don't want her as the people's choice? No, <laughs> that's not what I said. <laughs> it's not as clear a path, I you guess. You think KMT hates you? Wait until you get her, okay? <laughs> She's Italian. No, I love it. No, yes, but she's Chicago. We got it. We got it. She's, she's <laughs> Chicago, hometown girl. Okay. Yeah, right, right. You she probably... had a prom at the, the shed. Uh, did, did she have the Adler Planetarium? I know these were things. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Okay. I don't know about you, but I feel emotionally exhausted by this yes. week. Yeah. All season. I feel like manifesting getting Wakaba to these Olympics has been very tiring, knowing that the Federation has hates- been exhausting, hasn't it? You, you feel like you carry the weight. I felt, you know, when she got through the short, I was like, oh God, now all the pressure on the free, you know, it no, didn't, it didn't make it any short. easier. Yeah. Now, I would have felt better if she had nailed a triple axel in the short instead of, but I understand, especially in this situation. Play it safe, keep your name in it. 
don't mess this up because she did so well. Was it in Budapest? Where was she where she did the triple X on the short? It was somewhere in Austria. Austria. <clears throat> and then of course missed it in the long. And then the next time she tried it in the short, it did not work. So I, I see why they would have left it out. Do you think she needs it in the short at the Olympics? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Against Trusova, who's wiping out on the triple axle, who you know she's going to go for it at the Olympics, and Anna right. Sherbakova, who doesn't have one, yes, she needs to yeah. do it. Even if it was like the attempt she did in the free, where it was just a small step out, like you're still gaining some points, right? This, yes, but she can do it. Wait, I Dave, don't... did you know that Wakaba is doing the risings? I think she's doing the rising sun of the Lion King at the beginning of that program. Because that's how the music, I didn't know this until I was watching her. Isn't that what, um, the guy with the blue butt, isn't that what he does in the, in the, uh, Rafiki, yes, <laughs> I was, I'm like picturing a skater, I'm like, who is that? <laughs> yes, so it's, she is showing the sun rising, and then it like begins the day, and I was like, I love catching moments like that. Yeah. That's why I wore my new Christmas sweater from Debbie, I thought it had some Lion King energy to it. It yes. does, it does, yeah. War the the war. general color theme, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be culturally appropriating. I am just, it's an homage, okay? It's yeah. an homage. I'm going to say this blue is an homage to Shizuka Arakawa, who was a frontier braver in Japanese ladies' game. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's yeah, not I, I have usually that. picked, and, you know, we got to wear the sweater for, that mom gets us. It feels a little bit like a dress, but I was like, Feeling some real Lion King. Even better for skating. Yeah, now just do black leggings and you're all set. <laughs> oh my God, I was, yes. Amazing, uh, amazing. Yeah. But yes, it was an exhausting four minutes because I was like, you are so close, Wakaba, you are so close. <laughs> you're almost there, you're she almost there. Me too. I know she did. I, it was interesting. Some we, we have often heard from athletes say that the nationals, especially in Olympic year, is even greater pressure in some ways than the Olympics, the kind of lead up to it. The and national championships is the toughest championship. I'll say it again. The <laughs> pressure, it's like a knife going through your body. <laughs> Yes, yes, thank you, yes. <laughs> but you could see the release on a lot of these um, lady competitors here. There was um, a release that reminded me of some of the release you see at the end of Olympic programs. Like, oh my God, it's over. Like all of this buildup is done. And I felt Wakaba was one of them. Yes. Yeah, it had to be so intense for her. And I'm so happy she did. I felt that they went a little conservative in her marks, and I would just like to call out judges four, five, seven, and eight. In the free skate? I think we could have gone higher, and I think that that was maybe some reputation of Wakaba within Japan. I felt that we could have at least had her at a nine flat for program components for a lot of them. Uh, not saying that she should have beaten Kauri uh, program components. Kauri had a Joie de vie, she had a, a speed and an energy and a confidence that I think you could tell that Wakaba was getting through this very stressful moment in her life um, and with the step out. But I did think that they could have gone higher and set her up for more success at the Olympics. Because I do think that it's not... Okay, I, where do you think they fit in, Kauri and Wakaba? Four and five right now? I think they're four and five. But do you think that two and three are sign sealed delivered on yours? Uh, to, uh, I don't think three is sign sealed delivered on yours. I think Trusova has proven if she throws down a number logistically, it might just be really tough. So I think Anna is susceptible because she has the the she's the wild card technically it seems. So I could see a walk up a jump her way in there. But as we've seen internationally. Judges will give Sherbakova some huge PCS boost, deserved or not, um, that I don't know that Wakaba could make up with one triple axel in the tree. I think she would need three solid ones if she wanted a shot at getting in there, and Anna would have to fail at her clock. Okay, so I think that Wakaba needs the triple axel in the short. And at this point, we just need to stay clean in the free. Okay. Just let it happen. Okay. Let it happen. <laughs> I'm not saying that she's winning a bronze medal. She needs to set herself up for the possibility that not everyone is perfect under Olympic pressure, even Team Tutbrizo. 
and okay. she has the Olympic program. Yes. Nothing about Bolero, nothing about whatever the other Cruella, nothing about whatever Anna is skating to today. Like none of it inspires me to jump out of my seat with goosebumps and like scream at the top of my lungs. The Lion King program does, even though I'm I know sorry. the technical content is different. Some of the judges gave our friend Cowrie higher in the choreographic sequence. I thought yeah, that that's was that's incorrect. I think that they often judge the choreographic sequence as a popularity contest, to be honest. Yes, right? like, yes. And it's funny because like the whole point of this was like, here, have carte blanche, like just run with it. Do anything that you all say we miss in skate, here's your chance, do it. And some people so take advantage of it and some people just like phone it in. And you're like, no, this was like given to all the fans, I think it's like a bone to be like, no, it can still be fun like the 90s. Here, we'll do a choreographic sequence. So a few people and they need take a advantage. choreographic spin and a choreographic sequence, and we need to free up some of the elements for more creativity. Yeah, agree. Let's let change it from being a sport. It's just what they did in Ice Dance, where they just opened it up a little bit in that last minute to right. just make it free. Freedom. Yeah. 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 That way, you could see Sasha Cohen do a headless scratch spin. Or you could see... Because you know, know what was so alluring about a Lucinda, about a Sasha headless scratch, about those Denise Bielman headless ones? It was that there is also great talent in being able to sustain something for a very long time. Yes. Like, you know, in like some star searchy kind of talent thing, in vocal music, people go nuts the longer the note is held. Then and I am music. telling you. <laughs> and then she's still holding and holding, and you're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. That is just as exciting as showing me that in two seconds, you can hit 85 different positions that my eye can barely see, let alone count the rotations. Yes. Like, give me, give me one huge scratch spin moment that has us so sorted how fast it's going and how long it's lasting. How about when Sasha did the scratch from the forward and she put the arm? Oh my God. Okay. And then you could take that arm and be like, why don't we do Tosca instead? <laughs> <laughs> okay how about i am your daughter your wife and mother i am your sister i am your lover what in the benoit is this program just i i don't see it with cowrie please go back to the piano please go back to the piano but i'm sorry as jonathan by was hit the piano yes the piano piano, piano. no that would be more like quiet. yeah the instrument i say chicago it's a piano <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's, it seems to be such a thematic kind of program. And yet I don't seem to see all the articles that help me understand. Well, and as we know, I don't like programming. And what, what's happening here? This is what in the Aliona and TJ is going on in this program? Okay, I don't, <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get I, it, but what I do get is a clean performance. So, I mean, more props to you, Kauri. And again, the egg, the speed on her double axles. Even though the Insane. transitions are not the best, the height no. and distance is fantastic. Yeah, the flow out of that thing. Like, and again, I would like to credit her exit out of a double axle just as much as if she had twizzled out of it. You, you know, I think that's just as impressive. But. I mean, it was, it was great. I mean, she had the energy and the confidence and this is her event. I mean, she owns Japanese nationals. This is and she has chosen her strategy and not waver. She's not going for an extra element. Mm -hmm. She's going to stay totally clean and totally consistent. And she has. Mm -hmm. so I mean, we'll, we'll see if it pays off. She's going to score points if she could do the jumps like that. If she could do that yeah. performance at the Olympics, it's putting the pressure on ahead. I mean, they're going to have to nail it. Yes, they're gonna, and they're going to have to nail their extra, what do they call them, ultra C, but then so ultra C, that don't call them. Allah is not, you know, just going to be every judge at the Olympics, so. Um, yeah. It is, it is, it, but it is, and we were talking about this a little bit with Russian nationals. I just feel like I'm legit, I know I'm a broken record. I feel like I'm legitimately watching a different sport. It's totally different. And again, it's, it's it's not against the girls competing, or ladies competing. It's not against anyone because you're playing in the system you're playing in. But to me, I watch this and I say, oh, this is the sport I like. 
-hmm. more of this sport. And I understand it is a sport. So you do want the things. People were trying quads here, not so many successfully. A lot more triple axle attempts, but obviously at Russian Nationals, it was, in, it was like 18 quad attempts or something like that. But again, that has less to do with the sport I like. That has more to do maybe with what other people have always liked about the sport. Mm -hmm. Japanese Nationals hits, hits the mark for me. So again, I think you're right. We're very happy discussing Japanese nationals. We're calm. We're like the calm app after. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it also, I don't think we're alone. I think the judges might agree so that if given the opportunity to show that a clean Japanese woman with perhaps less insane technical content, but good technical content, we would like to show you that we value that mm -hmm. instead of like sort of slap together more difficult. They are my pick for four and five with Luna being six, about okay. roughly, roughly, right? That's kind of how I see I, the career. That absolutely tracks. Uh, maybe Luna not six, maybe Yi Lim Kim, or, you're right. Or, or, or that's Young kind you of, even, yeah, yeah. Kind of how I see it. Um, yeah, I, I will make a, I will have a better picture, I think, on Luna after Europeans. Okay. Because she had like some really nice moments in the fall and some more like still working through it moments in the fall. So I'll be intrigued where she's ended up. How about Rinka Watanabe performing to Kamina Barana, which I saw Jonathan perform at the NJ Pack, doing a, a triple <laughs> axel, which was great. Yeah. And an equally stunning triple Lutz Euler triple cell, showing um, Anastasia Mishina how to do an Euler. Okay, it was good. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, okay. So let's let's talk this one out because who we skipped over in this was, and it's it's so weird. At first, I always think I'm saying Monica. Monica, Monica Kawabe. Kawabe. Who I, I sure love. You. Okay. Yes, I do too. Now, having seen her in Canada live, like her triple axel, we saw the stop, drop, and roll. Correct. Yes. Yes. But then saw her rebound and do like a free that was like amazing. So you knew this girl had something special in the triple axel. The rest of the jumps, Dave, it makes me nervous. It's like how we used, I used to say about Kevin Amos, like he's getting it and I like the skating, but I don't feel relaxed because I don't understand if the technique is going to be there. So with Mana, I, after the triple axel, I was kind of like, okay, you're getting out these combinations and these jumps, but they don't seem as steady as for instance, Rinka, mm -hmm. who I thought then did a great triple axel, but I, had, I was a little more secure in her jumping. Now tell me please, are you more afraid of her coach, Mia Hamada? Or are you more afraid of a Terry? Are you more afraid of a Terry who leads with who she is? Or Mia right. who has on the fake smile that she has- Mia, that is always, for people that know <laughs> what they're looking for, that's the danger sign to really look for. And you know, we heard for years from other athletes, like that's the dangerous one because you have no idea at first. She's the Japanese Ateri, is what they would say, yes. Except and without the, the results. Meek is even similar, right? Yeah, yeah. Although not as much with Mana, <laughs> but they kept her in the fight. Yeah, I didn't know if that was a Mia Hamada. Like, I'm just going to say that we know. did see that Mar and Honda, Satoko and Rika have scattered, right? They are not, uh, yes. And didn't, didn't scatter because it was going great. Yeah. It was going until it wasn't going, right? Yeah. Although she does know how to package people so well, I will say. Yeah. Unlike a Terry. <laughs> The abuse there are excellent packaged. music choices. Yeah, there are. The abuse it's is packaged advantage. with such a lovely bow on it that we want to believe it's not, <laughs> right? You, that's, that's the thing, is you do want to believe it. And her show makes you believe that maybe it is not so. Uh, she was always show. so happy for Satoko. I know, and Satoko was the one that was seemed so serious. And you're like, oh, hmm. But I wondered, because I'm, I, I may have an unpopular opinion here. Mm -hmm. I felt like my Mihara was underscored. Well, and that's something, if I were on the selection committee, and I understand that I'm probably in the minority on this, I feel like Mai is more consistent than Mana or Rink. I could have seen it going for Mai. Obviously, Mia Hamada has more political pull within Japan. Mai gave it away by having two errors. I know, back to back. And because she was really behind in the free only two points. I mean, she left tons of points on the table by doing the single axle, single toe. 
that was that was really unfortunate yeah she would have easily survived she could have survived the triple lutz triple toe q double toe under it's that the single axle single toe yeah i still would have debated sending her i would have as well ever mana is 17 and she did triple axle in both programs and we've seen her and great ones kind of climbing in a wave this year of up and down and i have to look at who are we going to develop long term right it doesn't always work out but you hope that you're sending the future star to the olympics to get the experience to improve and the one thing i'll say about mana even though she didn't do great at junior worlds in the past is that she's on the rise and getting better with every day and you hope that at 17 years old she's going to be in the mix by the time she's 19. Mm. that's where my thought process is with sending her it makes sense from a federation standpoint in cultivating new talent which is what something we say other federations miss the boat on all the time so you're absolutely right sentimentally i see someone who struggled i see someone who's doing everything they can they're pretty consistent they did well they beat mana in canada um but uh two I'd fourth places that, i'd love to know how that vote went because i bet it wasn't unanimous i feel like it wasn't it's interesting because mana had a silver medal at nhk but did not do so well at skate canada whereas mine was fourth at both of her grand prix so i felt like you could argue either way i personally feel more um comforted by the consistency of a my in general but i understand that like but what are we doing about the future we have to send mana if we're the japanese federation to start to cultivate a, a much bigger scene for her and isn't it a statement that japan sends two skaters with great triple axles to the olympics right and i think it says to all the developing skaters that you, you need know, one too yeah. you need one too it doesn't stop at a triple triple you need to do this and right you need to that makes so much sense because also as people were talking about after our russia video like elizabeth versus anna all the a lot of these teams their choices are sort of just up to them because the, both skaters will probably finish around the same place so if we're being honest like i can't imagine my or mana would have crazily outscored one or the other Ooh. at the Olympics. Do you think? I can trust my Mihara to deliver like a Toyota Corolla, right? <laughs> if you're getting a rental car that you want to be safe when you go to Nashville, you go with my Mihara, right? Uh, right. You may get that luxury SUV uh, from uh, Mana, it may also. <laughs> Be a lemon okay be a chevy of a yeah <laughs> you don't know what you're gonna get okay right. yeah so they're choosing to to risk big ultimately for the payoff of either way it goes it helps her for the next for the next four years so that makes total sense to me i was just disappointed for mine i was disappointed with rina matsuki for the whole season <laughs> Yeah, we also with her yeah. when we saw her last year she had a love she's a lovely quality we had seen some triple axle attempts. It just has not come together. An unusual thing for someone who would have missed the Lutz and the Flip, only to turn around and do a great double uh, triple Lutz just a little bit later. And so that's always the indicator to me that there's some chaos in the- There's some chaos, some there's ability program. and talent. And you know, yeah. the Japanese just need a little bit of one or two more skaters to really push the depth forward in the ladies to get the competition up right it seems like there's like a certain level of competition where like then it just like becomes like in russia where everyone is delivering these elements and performing at these levels it seems like there were like maybe one chai although um rian sumiyashi doing you know quad toe which it wasn't landed but you could tell in a couple months she's almost there she's almost there it looked like in the video you said and i loved this video someone started putting together just the quad and triple axel attempts for the japanese ladies mm -hmm. it's amazing mm -hmm. i would imagine the video for the us is pretty short uh after our nationals <laughs> and subsequently the one in russia was an hour like I mean, <laughs> it's just a fascinating a fascinating thing to keep on because the Japanese women in particular really glom onto the triple axle. And I'm just curious if that's because they have great edges and knees 
And I don't mean to sound trite about this, but I don't know if this is also part of their skating heritage, part of like Midori and triple axles and then Mao and the triple axle, if that jump in and of itself carries a weight and a symbolism to it, maybe more than a quad toe. I don't know, or if they're just going in order. We do quads after we do the triple axles. I don't know. No. I think that's a great thing. I think there could be a lot of theories on it. Obviously the Dudikov technique, not so axle friendly. Right. The, uh, I would think the Yamada technique, more axle friendly. And we saw exactly. a lot, and I think it's also, we've seen a lot of triple axles from Japan over the years. It's not just Majori Ito, Yukori Nakano, Mao Sada, Yoshionda, right? right? So many over the years. So I think that it's, more, I think like when you see it, you replicate it, right? Like you see mm. what's possible. So you start to, it's it's kind of like in vault, in, in gymnastics, the double twisting Yurchenko when Vanessa Atler was competing was considered state of the art. Like a couple girls in, in the world did it. Then all of a sudden everyone started doing it and it went to the Aminar and it was like, oh my God, it had been done one time before. And then people started doing it again. And then everyone in the US, just as soon as they got their double, they started working for it. I think it's mm. like that with the jumps now where we used to stop at the triple ups, triple toe. Right. You know, that was what you needed, right? That's what you need to perfect. I think when you see the triple axles and then girls start doing it and they start doing quads in the juniors and you start to have all of this, then it starts to shift the mind, you know, of the mm. coaches, of the training, of people. In, I, it moves yeah. the finish line in a way. Yeah. But like, again, I know there is such this like nostalgia to it because of course in the United States, I know we pretend Kimmy Meissner had one, but that to me as a fan never landed in the same way like the Tanya ones did. And we waited until Mariah. It took all of that time in the United States for us to have two mm -hmm. kind of consistent triple axel jumps. But think about it, from Kimmy to Mirai, kind of a long period of time, right? Yeah, from Tanya to Kimmy was a long period of time. But, so Tanya to Kimmy, huge period of time. Kimmy to Mirai, shorter. Mirai to Alyssa, shorter, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's right. What's, what's changing. Uh, so yeah. that's what's exciting. Um, that's a good point, yeah. And Amber trying it. And I think we'll see more attempts in the future. I'm not saying it was always perfect, but right. at least they're trying it. Lindsay's right. working on it. Isabeau is working, I'm sure, on a bunch of things. So that's exciting. Mia Callen doing the quads, working on the triple axle. So I think you at least see the progressions of where it's right. going. Yeah. yeah, I think the fact that so many Japanese ladies were doing triple axles, although a Terry Center interview that they, they have quads. I mean, there's one girl that we've seen in the juniors that can do a quad, but uh, we have- Unless she refers to Rika still having made those attempts, but- Yeah. Yeah. So, Weird to not see her here. Yeah. Well, she withdrew and then unwithdrew. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. The re is originally said that she wasn't going to compete. And then the next day, the article said, well, maybe she's going to compete. I think it was, she was obviously trying and she's had an ankle injury. And I, I wonder if it's all connected, you know, how like one injury can cause another, but like, we had heard from Benoit last year when he was here that she had hurt her back because um, he's worked with her uh, before, but it was the ankle that you know, took her out. So okay, I think you could tell that there've been several injuries that she's dealt with over the last year or so. I mean, really sad to see such a mainstay someone uh, to get and i feel the same way with brady to we don't know if she's going to compete at nationals or not but to get all the way to the olympic finish line and then not be able to see them during an olympic season when they're trying to get back right very, uh, yeah very sad uh, for her and someone that has been so in it and she had that season when she was winning everything and then it didn't happen at the worlds and, and then it's never been the same since so. right right and then, and then someone here like Satoko, these are one of those like in between performances for me. Beautiful job, same under rotations, not really relevant to the big competition, still clobbering everyone in PCS, but hmm. I just admire her. I don't know. I just admire she's still doing it. It's gorgeous program. The best, yeah. the best, the classiest. Doesn't have to be doing it. They don't need her. She can't really do what she would have to in order to be relevant, but she's still creating beauty. I would like her to do a show where she just did big open axles like Tenley Albright and just spun and skated and did spirals and just- And just communicated and emoted. Yes, I don't need to see her jump. Frankly, don't really 
want I to. prefer not to, in fact, yeah, exactly. Why, why interrupt that gorgeousness with nerves for me? <laughs> I would like to see her on the Maus Auditor just being amazing, okay? Uh, <laughs> and then Daisuke can come and do La Bayadere, okay? And then we'll just... And Marin Honda will do something, we just don't know what. <laughs> Marin Honda will do Romeo and Juliet um, for That's old right. time's sake, okay? That's right. I mean, she had a turn dot too. Yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> what was your moment of Japanese nationals? You no, know, it's really hard to say because I thought there were a few. Okay. And so yeah, it was, was it was it was it was clouded by some other stuff. But I think Wakaba sort of solidifying her climb back to to the relevant team, the top the top team, and and being named to that Olympics is is a really exciting feel good moment. So I'm going to go with that. And how about the fact that the top three ladies from four years ago are still in the mix here? That's exciting too. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Um, uh, I think obviously Wakaba making it. Uh, Yuzu trying uh, the, the quad axle and doing such a good attempt and being- Seeing him healthy, seeing him like with a, although I wondered if he was ill in the pre, but the just seeing him physically there in it, he's gonna throw down and make an exciting Olympics. And I'm I'm here for it. Uh, that was thrilling too. Yeah. yeah, we want to know. What do you think? Should he go for history with the quad axle or history with the third gold medal? What do you think in the comments? What, what's your opinion there? And would do you think we should just watch him do quad axle attempt after quad axle attempt in the exhibition? At the exhibition, but bring the lights up, please. No yes. spotlights. All full house lights. <laughs> And uh, Kazuki Tomono doing La La Land is all the things. I'm glad you you mentioned that as your moment of the week the other week about that final step sequence because I was like waiting for it this time. And then as it happened, I was like, it was like crashing over me, wave after wave of excitement in that program. It was, thank you for drawing my attention to it. Hold <laughs> well, an edge, it looks sexy, everyone. 